Our first comment is from Liberated Godlessness who said, If no one ate meat, there would be no fertilizer for the plants we would be eating. No way to boost the plant's growth or sustain the ground soil. So meat production is undeniably necessary for the survival of the human species. In the modern sense, of course. You couldn't be more wrong. We've been doing it now for 15 or 16 years. Um, it's working very well, people are very happy with it. I mean, it's nice to have people back on the land, working land, and everybody's more than happy to be doing it. We've developed a system of fertility building, uh, which relies very much on green manure. So we're using plants to produce nutrients, which are fixed from the air to improve biodiversity, uh, and not relying on importing somebody else's land to support our fertility, which is what most conventional and organic production is dependent on. So we, we've kind of designed this system which is more or less independent of exterior forces. And because we're building carbon in the soil, this is particularly important, I mean, and a very small increase in organic content in the soil uh, has a huge effect in terms of carbon entrapment. In fact, this is one of the biggest carbon sinks possible soil. So it's not only good for animals, it's also very good for carbon capture, which is obviously good for climate change. So we're building organic material, and the only way to build organic material long term is through plants. You cannot do it through manure, because manure dissipates into the environment very quickly, it gets broken down. Whereas plants, they leave roots in the ground, which gradually decay and become carbon. In here, there's actually four different types of green manure, yeah. four yeah. different plants, all doing slightly different things. Uh, but all building fertility. And the, the, the final outcome of this is a, a soil which is very friable, good, uh, good population of worms, yeah. easily worked, doesn't take as much energy to work soil yes. when it's in good yes. condition, yes. and uh, very good for plant roots. So yeah. this, this forms the basis of fertility for future cropping. For future cropping, yeah. yeah. We grow a whole range of crops, 70 different types of vegetables almost 300 sowings a year, almost one sowing every day on average. So it's making the best possible use of land to feed people, which is really what farming should be doing. As clearly shown in this video, veganic farming is a viable method of farming that has been going on for decades all over the world. When there is a will, we will find a way. Next, Bastard from the Bush said, How many vegans and fruitarians do we know who live to be 100 years and over? Why do vegans complain of either tooth loss teeth problems, irritability, and inexplicable hair loss. The great empires of the world were built and maintained by aggressive meat eaters. India's Mahatma Gandhi saw the error in his ways in keeping a vegetarian diet and said anyone who promotes vegetarianism is a traitor to India. The problem is not eating meat per se, but too much of it. The vegan movement is relatively new, and so finding centenarians, people who have lived beyond 100 years, is challenging. Most people, regardless of diet, do not make it into the hundreds. I suspect that in the next few hundred years, you will find a higher proportion of people living longer on a plant-based diet. Here are just a few examples of very old vegans and vegetarians thriving on a plant-based diet. However, some have subsequently passed away. The oldest woman in Multnomah County turned 108 today. Laureen Denwitty lives at Cherry Blossom Cottage in Southeast Portland. She credits her vegan diet for her longevity and says it keeps her feeling good. Nothing but fruit, vegetables, and nuts. And, uh, well, it's all there in the Bible. Laureen is likely the oldest woman in all of Oregon, but that's not official because the state does not keep those records. Blanche Mannix at 105 years old. Angeline Straddle at 104 years old. Beatrice Wood, 105 years old. Fuja Singh at 100 years old. Florence Reddy, 101 years old. Gladys Sanfield at 105 years old. I'm not sure what vegans you've been talking to regarding tooth loss, irritability, and inexplicable hair loss, my teeth are in excellent shape. I'm generally in a good mood, unless I have to deal with annoying meat defenders, and I have a full head of hair. In regards to great empires of the world being built on aggressive meat eaters, how is that relevant to a discussion on what we should eat today given our available options? The great empires of the world also depended heavily on slave labor to achieve their greatness. Would you suggest that we start rounding people up and forcing them to work without pay? Obviously not. Mahatma Gandhi, a vegetarian for most of his life, was a proponent of vegetarianism, and he believed that food was an integral part of shaping our consciousness. 
I cannot find any quote in which he ever criticized fellow vegans or vegetarians. You, sir, are making shit up. Stannis Baratheon King had this to say. My question to any vegan is, would you rather torture animals or would you let people die out of starvation? I do not really understand vegans. I never met one. I never met true vegetarian also. But my answer to should everyone go vegan is one big no. Way to create a false dichotomy. The majority of people on this planet are not in a position that they either have to torture an animal or starve to death. Unless you are incredibly poor or live in an area that you cannot eat a wide assortment of vegan foods, you have no excuse to continue to use, kill, and eat other sentient animals. For those in the world that have no other option other than to eat animals or starve, then the rest of us should be obligated to help these people in any way we can. Unfortunately, a lot of the world's poor are in their predicament because of their religious stance on contraception and education of women. Those who can go vegan should. Those who can't, we should help so that they can too. If you do not understand veganism, read some books, watch some videos, listen to some podcasts, and ask a vegan some questions. Send me a private message and I can do my best to answer any of your questions. Wajestic is up next with... Humanism is a religion. I would feel more comfortable if vegans who believe meat is murder acknowledge this. Those who do it for health reasons are a different story. The moral argument is bunk. If I watch a lion eat an antelope and I don't shoot the lion, does that make me an accessory? What am I if I shoot the lion or chase away the prey so the lion starves? Animals are like fruit. Treat them well and allow them time to replenish. Humanism is not a religion. Humanism is a movement of philosophy and ethics that emphasizes the value and agency of human beings, that prefers individual thought and evidence over doctrine or faith. I do not see how humanism has any direct connection with veganism. How would believing that humanism is a religion impact a vegan? The moral argument against eating animals is a very strong one. Most people would agree that it is wrong to unnecessarily harm animals. If necessity means anything, it surely would not include matters of convenience, amusement, tradition, and entertainment. If we caught someone torturing a dog for fun, we would all agree that his enjoyment does not justify his actions towards the dog. Now let's investigate our uses of animals and see if there are any true necessities that justify our use. Animals used as food account for the largest quantity. 58 billion land animals and potentially a trillion sea animals each year. Leading healthcare professionals and scientific studies are showing that we can be very healthy on a diet free of any animal ingredients. If we can be healthy without animal foods, then we have no nutritional requirement to eat animals. What reason do we have then to continue to eat animals? Convenience? Tradition? The entertainment of eating them? If we take serious our moral intuition that it is wrong to inflict unnecessary suffering and death on animals, we have only one option. Stop using and eating animals for food. In regards to your lion vs antelope comment, a lion needs to eat animals to survive. It has no alternatives for survival except to hunt and kill. If humans needed to eat meat to be healthy, I wouldn't be a vegan. However, I would feel morally obligated to fight for the best possible treatment of them during their life and death. Unlike fruit, animals do feel pain, have a will to live and survive, have relationships, play and communicate. And our last comment is from Lito Linio who had this to say. Vegans claim peace and mercy with the animals, yet they are using insecticide on crops to kill the live poor insects for the sake of their bellies. You vegans are greedy, ravening monsters, insects, killers. Free the poor insects and let them be. They also deserve to live not only animals, you greedy. I'm not sure if all insects are sentient, but I side on caution and give them the benefit of the doubt, and avoid killing or harming them whenever possible. I buy and encourage others to purchase produce that has not been farmed with insecticide. Not only do I not want insects killed in the production of my food, I do not want to consume trace amounts of it for health reasons. Your mocking comment is all too familiar amongst non-vegans. Rarely does a day go by that I do not hear a wise guy meat eater claim that vegans cause more harm to animals than they, or that plants are sentient or that we care for animals more than humans, or that meat is delicious and we are somehow missing out. Most of these comments come from people who have done little background research on the topic, feel threatened and uncomfortable that someone objected to their lifestyle, and then try to belittle the animal advocate. 
If you have a few minutes to waste by typing out baseless assertions meant to denigrate vegans, then you have a moment to spend with your friend Google to search the subject matter properly. There you have it. Five stupid comments from five different YouTubers. Which comment would you vote to win the Dumbass of the Week award? Would it be? 1. Liberated godlessness who thinks you need animals to grow crops. 2. Bastard from the bush who thinks that vegans have tooth loss, irritability, and inexplicable hair loss. 3. Stannis Baroth the On King who thinks that you either have to torture animals or allow people to starve to death. 4. Wajestic who thinks that humanism is a religion and that vegans should acknowledge this for some strange reason. Or 5. Lito Linio who thinks that his mocking comment regarding vegans' supposed disregard for insect life is noteworthy. Please leave your votes and comments below and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to press the like button and share with all your friends and family. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button below. To ensure that you don't miss out on future content, click the subscribe button and bell to be notified of new uploads. Interested in atheist related videos? Check out my other YouTube channel devoted to atheist and religious content. Link is in the video description below. Lastly, if you like the work that I do and have a few bucks to spare, please consider becoming a patron of the channel by supporting my Patreon project. I am more than halfway to reaching my $100 a month goal. Please help if you can. Thank you for your ongoing support and as always, thank you for watching.